Michael Joseph Jackson, the King of Pop, possibly the greatest performer to have ever lived and certainly the most awarded artist of all time. The first a black man to appear on MTV and quite possibly the most famous man on the planet, the man of many faces and all of them pretty weird. But was he a fucking paedophile? Get in that minivan and catch that fucking Pikachu! Now, of course, it depends who you ask. If you ask any of these sycophants, they'd say, how dare you? This man invented the fucking moonwalk. Of course he wasn't a paedophile. What if you asked any of these people? They'd say, yes, yes, he was a fucking paedophile, and that's why God decided to kill him. Especially this lady. But probably that guy. But what if you were to ask someone whose job it is to remain impartial? Someone who has to base their conclusions on evidence alone. Someone like Judge Judy. I am older than Methuselah. Or even Judge Rinder. Coopy! Or perhaps even Judge Dredd. I am the law! Holy crud. Holy crud is right. So, they are the judges. You can be the jury. And let's try to reach... A verdict. Now, the legal definition of a paedophile states that it is a person who is sexually attracted to children. Now, we're not trying to prove whether Michael was a, a child molester or an actual sex offender, just whether he matches his definition of a paedophile. Now, in order to determine whether Michael complies with that legal definition of a paedophile, we're going to break that down into two parts. The first part is whether Michael had an interest in children at all, and the second part is whether that interest was sexual. So, in order to determine the first part of that, we're going to go to, yes, you've guessed it, Exeter City Football Club. Now, I will warn you, this next clip does include... Yuri Geller. When I called Michael and I said to him, Michael, will you come to Exeter City Football Club? He said, are there going to be children from hospitals? I said, yes. His first words were, see it as done. Michael Jackson. Now, that could be completely innocent, right? But what could be taken from that clip is that Michael is only willing to turn up as an honorary chairman to Exeter City Football Club if there are sick children there. Children that could be too weak to fight off the advances of a real life skeletal. Now obviously I'm speculating there and it's quite unfair so let's move on to the second clip. This next clip is an outtake from his interview with Martin. Give me a break. How's that? Thank you mate. Lovely. Just got this one in the corner. Because we want to be wide. I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That was owned by the hotel. You've just torn a page out. <laughs> Thanks very much. This is so sweet. Show me. Oh, the picture. Yeah, it's lovely. Okay. Why do you love these pictures? Yeah, sure. that's okay. It feels my heart with bliss. Good God, really. I honestly do. In that clip, Michael uh, is tearing a picture out of a hotel uh, magazine, a picture containing children. Now, once again, that could be completely innocent, um, but that clip will become a bit more apparent later on in the video. Now, for our next set of clips, we're going to have to go back to, yes, you guessed it again, uh, console games of the 80s and 90s. Now we all remember this uh, spiky blue bastard. It was his job to collect rings. And then there's the workshop Italian plumber whose job it was to collect coins or biscuits, whatever the fuck they were. But Michael had a game, Moonwalker. And in this game, Michael had to collect children. Yes, you guessed it. Michael collected fucking kids. And Michael had a real life child collection. And over the years, he collected dozens of kids. 
from all walks of lives, regular kids, but some of them were child stars. Even Macaulay Culkin and John Lennon's kid couldn't escape. But I want to draw your attention to one child in particular, Terry George. Now Terry appeared in a Louis Theroux documentary where he goes into detail about how he met Michael. Terry had been friends with Michael as a teenager in the early 80s. Armed with a cassette recorder that his parents had bought him, Terry would attempt to interview any celebrities staying in Leeds. I'd gone along, knocked on the door of the hotel, uh, the hotel room, and Michael answered the door. Um, there was no security around, nobody stopping me really. And I just said, hi, I'm Terry, can I do an interview with you? And he was like, quite taken back by that. Uh, he invited me into his room. He was there with his brother, Randy Jackson. And um, I did an interview with both of them. Yeah, so, but he was very, very friendly, fantastic, got on very well with him. Um, and swapped addresses and telephone numbers. And he rang me just the, the day after, actually, after he'd left Leeds. I'd met quite a lot of celebrities before. None of them had given me telephone numbers. Michael just freely gave it me. Um, but we did get on very well at the time. You know, we, we, it almost felt like I'd known him for a long, long time. You know, it, 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 it was very comfortable to be with, um, very easy going. Now, lucky kid, right, gets to interview Michael Jackson and his ironically named brother Randy. But I did notice in that clip um, that Terry mentions that he, no one he'd interviewed had ever given them his phone number or address before. And I wonder if Michael has ever handed out his number and his address to anyone who's interviewed him. Probably not. Could it just be a friendship blossoming or a small amount of grooming going on? But anyway, the next clip is a uh, segment of that actual interview. Here I am in the Dragon Arrow Hotel, Leeds, oh, and um, I'm in the Jackson 5 room. And I've just asked them for an interview, just asked Michael, and he says it, it's okay for a few minutes. Uh, just to prove it is him, I'll start off asking his name. And the date is the 19th of February, 1979. There you go, 1979. Uh, what is your name? Michael Jackson. What do you like most? Things that you like. I like kids a lot. And I think at this point, it's safe to say, no shit you like kids a lot. Uh, I have a lot of nephews and nieces. I like fish. Uh, <laughs> uh, strange how he jumps from one to the other, isn't it? Now, I'm glad you said that, Terry, because it is strange he jumps from kids to fish. It's almost as if he said kids, realised, hang on a minute, that sounds a bit fucking pervy, so I'd have to think of something else quickly, and he's come up with fucking fish. Thank you very much. OK, Terry, tell your brothers and sisters hi. Don't tell your brothers and sisters anything, Terry. Tell your fucking parents, mate. Now, all that aside, um, this next clip is what this entire interview has been building up to. So take a look at this. After their interview, Terry and Michael began a phone friendship until Terry notched up a £300 phone bill and got his parents' phone cut off. But in 1993, two papers ran the story that Michael had been masturbating during one of their phone calls. That dirty fucking bastard. Now, is that just tabloid bullshit? Or as Trump would say, You are fake news. And you, sir, are a fucking piss flap. Now, it's been in the papers that Michael made an inappropriate phone call to you. And did, did that, I mean, can you, talk, can you tell us what happened there? I don't really want to talk about um, what was printed in the papers. I mean, that was well documented. It came out really without my authority. I didn't, it, it, it developed from somebody who had a bit of a big mouth, basically. One of my close friends who knew about the story. I mean, can you say whether it's true? Parts of it are true, yeah. Um, parts of the story are true. Uh, I mean, I would say majority of it is true. So it turns out it wasn't bullshit. Terry says it was true. And the reason why I'm inclined to believe Terry over any of the 20 other alleged victims that Michael paid a reported $200 million to science that Terry never sold his story. Terry never asked for a penny. Terry made no accusations. He told a friend uh, what him and Michael had been up to, and his friend told the story. And I get the impression that Terry would have been happier if the story never came out at all. Now, it seems like we've, we've proved um, the 
first part of our paedophile definition and we've even jumped the gun a bit into proving the second part of that definition that Michael's interest in children was, was clearly sexual. Now delving further into the second part of that definition, in 2003 the LA County Sheriff's Department raided Michael's Neverland Ranch and they found some fucking strange shit there, properly strange stuff. Um, the evidence logs show things like child mannequins positioned in various ways around the house. Perhaps for Michael, if there was no children there, he could still feel the presence of children. Because I think it's safe to say by this point, Michael fucking loved kids. In a weird way, too. Because other parts of the evidence log show things like children's clothing, um, pornography, grooming materials, and some of that pornography was sadomasochistic um, and had a, a fetish aspect to it. But other items in that pornography showed adult bodies um, engaged in sexual acts with children's faces superimposed over the top of them. Now, do you remember that clip from earlier in the video where Michael is tearing a page out of the hotel book, a page that contains children's faces. Is he gathering material? Is he gathering images of children's faces to superimpose over his sadomasochistic porn collection? I think the answer to that is yes. And I think in this video we've proved that Michael's interest in children was clearly sexual. He was definitely a paedophile. He won't turn up to a football match under the invite of Yuri Geller unless there are children there, specifically sick children. He releases a computer game uh, where you cannot progress to the next level unless you've collected all the fucking children. He surrounded himself with uh, children from all walks of life over the years, regular kids, child stars, there's plenty of evidence of that. And then the police raid on his property shows that his pornography, his pornography was child based, he had plenty of grooming material. The entire place was built as a theme park to entice kids and put them at ease. All part of the grooming process. So I think Judge Judy, Judge Rinder, Judge Dredd would all be satisfied that Michael Jackson was a fucking paedophile. But unfortunately, justice would never see its day. All thanks to the actions of one man. <laughs> So in future, if anyone tries to tell me that Michael Jackson wasn't a paedophile, he was just a child star, warped by fame, and liked to surround himself with other children, I would say to them, tell it to the one-legged man, so he can bump it off down the road.